Did you know that in order to film an intense 27-minute scene, the crew of Succession hid rolls of film around the set so the camera operators could reload without cutting? And for the intense Season 4 election night episode, they hired a former Obama advisor to help orchestrate the chaos? Let's take a look behind the scenes of this iconic show. Okay, let's just start by saying I'm doing some huge spoilers here. So if you haven't watched the fourth season of Succession, you might want to bail real quick, then head back here after you've watched. Okay, now that my official duty as spoiler alerter is done, let's get to the biggest bombshell of the entire series, Logan Roy's death. Obviously, in a sense, it's something everyone was waiting for. That was not a good feeling. Yeah, no shit. The character had several near-death situations over the course of the show, and the dang thing is called Succession, aka who's gonna get the company when he dies because if we know Logan, we knew he wasn't actually going to ever retire while he was alive. But they still have to make the big decisions on how and when to do it. According to writer and creator of the show, Jesse Armstrong, a huge choice was to not include an actual death scene. This is because he wanted it to feel, for both the characters and the viewers, kind of similar to the way we experience death in the modern era. We wanted to capture a feeling of death of communication over phone and email. Then there was the style of shooting. Director Mark Mylod was very intentional about the way he shot it, looking to amp up the intensity and frenetic nature of the situation. It felt to me like the camera had to be almost sadistically voyeuristic. It had to stay really close. The logistics of the shoot were pretty challenging too. They shot the whole scene on the boat several times in chunks, but then they decided to try it as one long shot in one take. Basically, they were putting on a one-act play on a boat. What we ended up doing, we shot like five or six days, and then we ran the whole thing. As it turns out, it's like a 27-minute long scene. The problem was that they shot it on film, and that meant they needed to reload the camera every 10 minutes. So they came up with an unusual fix. And the camera operators worked on this idea of basically hiding rolls of film around the set. One camera would always be running so they wouldn't have to reload at the same time. But it was worth it because they got their best footage from the in-one take. There was also the bold choice of having Logan's death happen in only the third episode, leaving the rest of the season without him. Mylod talked about how it turns traditional storytelling on its head, and he loved the idea. You take all the, the places you'd expect such a kind of humongous event and play the exact opposite of that, and I thought that was just a brilliant, brilliant idea. And Armstrong was averse to the notion that Logan's death would come at the end of the season. He felt like it would ultimately be a letdown to have a death and then a funeral, and then the show just, like, ends. We want to see how a death of someone significant rebounds around a family. As challenging as filming Logan's death episode was for the crew, it was equally challenging for the actors. This was in spite of the fact that they also knew it was coming. Jeremy Strong, who plays Kendall Roy, talked about how there was no way to adequately prepare for it. I wasn't terribly surprised. I thought it made sense. And then when I read the script, I found it shocking. But at the same time, he loved how much it pushed him as an actor. I'll be given something that I think is, this is the limit of what I'm capable of as an actor. You have no choice but to go through that. This episode was one of those. Sarah Snook, aka Shiv, who was actually pregnant while filming, talked about the real-life stress that comes from filming scenes where the character is facing serious stress. Being in that frame of mind for two weeks at a time is not healthy. <laughs> she tried to counter the stress and intensity, and I guess the health of her baby, by emotionally pulling out of her character whenever the director yelled cut. It also helped keep her performances fresh and honest. For me, staying in means that it dulls and it's not good. The process was also pretty grueling for Kieran Culkin, who plays Roman, not just emotionally, but physically. Yeah, that was Roman going through some sort of emotional trauma, but I haven't. And of course, the decision to kill off Logan Roy had a direct impact on the actor playing him, Brian Cox. Hang on, this is one of the greatest pieces of work I've ever been involved in, and suddenly it's no more. When it came to nailing the election episode, the writers wanted to keep things realistic, yet incredibly tense. Election moments kind of keep on coming in the US, so it felt legitimate to have, to have another one. And while their ability to craft incredible narratives and characters is unquestionable, the production and writing team decided to lean into someone with actual big-time political experience. 
So they brought in Eric Schultz to advise them on the script, who was a former political advisor for President Obama. Schultz talked about how the aim was to make it feel similar to real life, and he admitted that Fox News calling Arizona for President Biden in the 2020 election served as some inspiration. The writers are always looking for real-life analog. The Fox's call for Arizona uh, in 2020 put them out on a ledge. Uh, a lot of the other networks were not willing to go there at that point. For Kieran Culkin, the election night episode was one of his favorites to play because of the clear motivation of his character. It's really nice for me when I show up to work and have to play the character when Roman has a one clear objective. That was a lot of fun to play. The writers have had a clear motivation for a few years now to somehow live up to the hype. Ever since Succession became a smash hit, each season brings more and more pressure for the writers and creative team to deliver. Yeah, that's great. Congratulations. Interestingly enough, Jesse Armstrong, while writing season three, found himself a bit behind schedule. This was in early 2020, and he admits to kind of wishing the world would sort of shut down for a couple months so he could finish. And spoiler alert, with the COVID-19 pandemic, it suddenly did. And yet the show trudged on. They shot all of season three during the most locked down time of the early pandemic. This was partially challenging because they needed to make it seem like the story was happening in the bustling streets of New York City. Not an easy task when the entire city is, you know, quarantining at home. So they had to get creative with the use of background actors, often just spacing them out enough to keep them safe while trying to make it seem like it was a non-pandemic world. Like all the productions that happened in 2020 and 2021, they had rigorous testing on set, social distancing, masks, etc. But unlike in real life, there were moments each day when the primary actors took off their masks and got in close proximity. For the cast and crew, this was an extra layer of realness and catharsis. It allowed them to propel themselves into a scene freed from the restraints of COVID, if only for a few minutes at a time. Because the actors had all this extra stuff on, you know, just before the take, come to take all that stuff off. The acting isn't the only thing that's super raw and real on Succession. Because if it seems like you're in the room with the Roy family as you watch, that's not an accident. The series is shot with techniques that aim to make it feel as real as possible. Director Mark Mylod talked about how he prefers to let the actors move around as they want and let the cameras move with them, as opposed to blocking out each action. He even likened the shooting style to a theater production. It's like the first day of rehearsing a play. The more geometric, the more symmetrical it becomes, the less authentic it always appears to me. He pointed out that if shots were to be aligned like perfectly and have the usual geometric shapes of TV and film, it would feel less authentic. So everyone kind of moves around as they see fit, and it's up to the camera operators to keep shooting them in the space available. Now, something else that is authentic, perhaps to a fault, is Jeremy Strong's acting technique. And while he doesn't cop to using the famous method acting that's popular with thespians, he definitely stays in character long after the scenes have been shot. This didn't always make working opposite him a lovely experience. A Vanity Fair article about Strong's process talked about how intense he can be and how it can be quite, let's just say, bothersome to his castmates. Even the extras can bear the brunt of it, as he apparently wanted to release real tear gas in a scene with hundreds of background actors. And there was one time when he apparently insisted on playing the kazoo while his scene partners were saying their lines. It's a little odd. And yet, it's hard to argue with the results. Kieran Culkin and Brian Cox didn't speak highly of Strong's process, with Kieran explicitly saying, it's not very helpful when you're in a scene with Strong. And Cox saying that despite warnings about it, Strong persisted. But Matthew McFadgen, who plays Tom Wamsgans, pointed out that the whole thing gets way overblown and it's not the main event considering it's an ensemble show. Speaking of the ensemble, it was originally set to look a little different. Apparently, co-creator Adam McKay gave Jeremy Strong the script and asked him to choose which character he connected with. Strong picked Roman, which eventually went to Kieran Culkin. So Strong kind of assumed he was out, but he was asked back to audition for Kendall and he killed it. Culkin, meanwhile, auditioned for Cousin Greg, which is a hilarious casting to imagine given the amazing job Nicholas Braun has done with the role. But ultimately, Culkin admitted that something drew him to the character of Roman. However, he doesn't necessarily think that's a good thing since Roman is basically a terrible person. Hopefully, you are caught up on the show and I didn't just spoil anything for you. But honestly, not much can spoil actually watching the show, even if you know what's coming. Have any thoughts about the behind-the-scenes action on Succession? Pop them in the comments section.